Hello my 3D printer friends, I am sitting here with the Creality Ender 3 version 3, not to be confused with the version 3 SE or KE. SE is your budget version 3, KE is your more advanced version 3, and version 3 is the granddaddy of all version 3s. If you are looking for the best version of the version 3 at this time, it will be the version 3 or its big brother, the version 3 plus. We will go ahead and build our version 3s together. Lucky for us, Creality has been hard at work designing the latest models of their famous Ender series, creating new printers that are much easier to assemble and their work has paid off. Building this printer will be faster and smoother than any Ender printer before it. However, some things will never change and we'll still need to open our box. Since every time I post a build video, somebody asks me, where did you get that really cool Lazy Susan? And I'll give you the answer. I give them every time. My mom found it at a garage sale. Pop the box open and remove the piece of foam that will reach you at the very top of the printer. This will expose a series of components, which we will remove and set aside. Here is your user manual. Here is your traditional sample of filament. This is likely hyper PLA, a bag of something, a piece of foam, a cute little Bowden tube, a box of random stuff, part one of the spool holder, part two of the spool holder, your screen, and another piece of protective foam. You will see the hot end is exposed. Do not yank on it because it's not coming out at this time. Carefully lift this center piece of foam and toss it aside. That will expose the KE hot end. You will take your fingers and slide them between the foam and each rail of the printer and slowly work that section up. Take that section and place it on your working table. This will expose a ton of cardboard. Go ahead and remove this block of cardboard. That will expose your gold PEI hotbed. On each side of the bed will be a block of foam. Go ahead and remove that foam. And in front of the bed will be yet another piece of foam. Go ahead and remove that. And behind the bed, one more piece of foam. Go ahead and remove that. This will fully expose your bed and you'll see that it can now actually freely move. Behind the printer, you will see these components right here. Go ahead and remove them. Slide your fingers down between the foam and the machine and slowly work it out of the box. Place it on your workspace next to the box and gently dispose of the box. And here we are looking at the two main components of the version 3. Please do be careful when handling this top side. This is a very soft metal and it will flex and warp if you're to grab it with one side and pick it up like an ape. Also, behind the machine, where you're used to seeing your Z-Rods, you will now see rails. However, we also want to avoid grabbing or squeezing those rails because we don't want to misshape them in any way. Turn the machine to the side and spot this slot right here. You are going to check to see the voltage it reads. Right now, the machine says 230. In the US, I needed to say 115. So, I will take a small screwdriver, stick it in here, and push the switch to the right. If you peek inside this box right now, it will read 115. Set your switch to the correct voltage for your region. With the printer set to the correct voltage, the first thing we'll need to do is mount this to the base. But before we do that, Crowley would like us to install the filament holder. The way the filament holder mounts is quite crafty. Here on the side of the V3, you will see two little nubs. You're gonna take your filament holder, Orientate it so the hole points up and slip these two notches over these two bolts, then push down. Your filament holder is installed. With the mount in place, take the actual spool mount, place it behind the hole and turn it clockwise until it stops. It should look like this with the spool facing behind the printer. Now, simply grab this top section without touching the rails or belts 
and simply nestle it into the two compartments on the base. Right here. Those of you used to older enders will be used to the balancing act typically required to attach these pieces. Not anymore. This would be a good time to open that little cardboard box that came with your printer. In there you will find a declogging tool, some zip ties, screws, some allen keys, a socket wrench, and a small screwdriver. And of course, the one thing you've all been waiting for, a brand new pair of clippers some metal grease, and a USB thumb drive. However, you will be learning to use Creality Cloud to print wirelessly. Yes? Yes. Good talk. We will be securing each gantry with four screws. Two in the front, two on the bottom. Your box came with an Allen key that fits. Go ahead and use that. I would suggest doing the first two on each side lightly to ensure that both sides are fitting properly. Then you can go back and tighten them both. With two screws on each side installed, tip the machine over and install two screws on the underside of both. With all four screws installed, carefully stand up your printer. We will install the screen. Point your eyes to the connection on the front left side and peel off that piece of tape. Find this bag that came with your printer and remove the screen. To install the screen, we will connect this cable to this connection if you're not sure which way to orientate the screen, the triangle will point down. Simply take this cable right here, line it up with the connector, and gently rock it into place. There will be no aggressive click, just a gentle slip into the port. At this time, line up the pins with the slot, tilt the screen back, and rock it down. Again, no aggressive snapping into place. Two fingers under the bed, two thumbs over the screen. Pinch, to be sure. Now with the machine mostly assembled, it's time to connect our wiring and our Bowden tube. For this, have your Bowden tube, zip ties, and snippers available. Look on the right side of the machine, where we will connect one, two, three wires. This connection to this stepper motor. It only fits one way, the notch will be forward. Gently push it into place. You might be confused at these two additional cables and where they connect. They are actually one cable and they simply connect to each other. And do the same with this little wire right here. Simply pick it up and plug it in. The notch fits forward. While we are here, you will notice this large harness coming out of the version 3. We will connect this to the runout sensor and this to the hot end. You will notice on the V3, the runout sensor is right next to the hot end. One of many nice upgrades on the V3 design. Take this connector, pins forward, and connect it to the runout sensor. The other connector goes to the hot end, right here. Simply take the harness and slip it down into that port and push. You will feel a gentle click, that's it, it's installed. Now, this isn't the most advanced method, but this is the official method and it does work. Take a zip tie, slide it up through the hole, down through the hole and zip tie this wire into place. 
clip off the extra with your snippers. This makes for a very quick, easy, toolless removal and installation of your hot end harness. With the zip tie in place, find this little connector and with the bulb portion facing the wire, go ahead and slip it into the space. Your hot end harness is fully installed. While you are here, go ahead and slip your Bowden tool into the coupler, push straight down, do not pull back up, but you'll feel it is secure. Look down and you will find the other Bowden connector coming out of the filament runout sensor. Go ahead and place the Bowden in there, push down, you will feel it grab, do not yank on it, just feel it secure. While you are here, take the harness to your hot end and simply snip it in to this little holder on the runout sensor. All together, it should look like this. You may still have a piece of foam on the hot end. Go ahead and slide it forward. But Mr. Rundown, what the heck is this? You might notice this bizarro contraption included with your V3. It looks like a shock or suspension system with hooks. Well, you are close. This is Creality's anti-tangle device. The intended purpose of this device is to provide tension to your spool to help avoid backlash while loading a new roll. Take your spool, notice how I prevent this problem, and place it on the holder. Then, take your fancy new toy, spread it out with your fingers, and simply snap it over the spool holder. Bring the leg down underneath the spool and you will see that device pressing up against the filament so that I may remove the filament and load it without risk of the spool rolling backwards or bird nesting causing a tangle. Is my form with this thing 100% correct? I'm not sure. Do I recommend you use it? No, I do not. However, you may notice Creality mounted the filament runout sensor just a few inches from the hot end, which is actually great, and the input is at the bottom. Therefore, loading filament like a mullet would be the proper method. I'm not a fan of this because loading from the bottom can cause that spool to roll itself and bird's nest. However, that is the correct method for the version 3. Take your filament, run it up into the runout sensor, unlock the extruder by pushing the switch to unlock, and then continue to feed the filament until you feel it hit the gears. Once it hits the gears, push it a little bit more and you will feel it slip down between the gears. You will get one good solid inch out of it, then go ahead and lock it. Congratulations, you have loaded your V3. Do keep in mind, I am loading this from its default position, which is all the way down. In actuality, you will likely be loading your filament much higher, which will allow much better access to that runout sensor. Congratulations, you have assembled your Creality Ender 3 version 3 and are ready to proceed with setup. We will do that in the next video. You are on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor at 3DRundown.com and building the Creality Ender 3 version 3 was today's adventure. In in front of the bed, yet another piece of cardboard, foam. Foam. It's foam, you idiot. Foam. Foam. Hey.